All right, Sammy. Good morning. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing really well. How about you? I'm hanging in there. I'm glad we got the 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 light issue not really fixed, but I'm not worried about it. All right. <laughs> My head's covering one of them. Yeah, your head's covering one of them. You're good to go. So, um, uh, what what coffee do you drink? What's your favorite coffee? Oh, I'm glad you asked. I'm super into coffee right now. Uh, this is Rising Star. Yeah. How about you? Uh, mine is the McDonald's coffee. Okay. Not not. I didn't go drive and get McDonald's. My wife gets the K cup. Okay. She does all the shopping. She uh. You know, like I gotta give you know what a what a perfect shameless area for me to give a plug. She goes to the store and endures the the mask. She wears the mask, right? There you go. There, there, there you go. That's okay. Barbarian Apparel, by the way. Josh sent me these, and he's actually making these custom. It's pretty sweet. But she rocks the mask out and goes to the store, and um, yeah, and everybody else. It sounds like people are just one way or the other. People are totally like out of their mind in fear or they're just like whatever. They're ignoring all the all the social distancing and that she said she's seeing it all. Yeah. Well, my grandparents the other day called me and they said, hey, Sammy, what do you want from the grocery store? I said, no, no, it's supposed to be the other way. I'm supposed to get you food. Yeah. And they they yeah. went and gave me up food. Yeah. They have, Sammy, they have a, uh, they actually have a time when it opens, that's when like people with a compromised immune system or uh, elderly people are supposed to go. That's when they're supposed to, they actually have a slot where they're supposed to go. And my wife's like, yeah, well, you're not supposed to go during that time. Yeah. yeah. Which that makes sense. Right. That makes sense. So, um, okay. So, uh, it was really cool seeing you yesterday. Where, 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 where did we uh, meet up yesterday? We were at what was formerly known as Squaw Rock. I'm not sure what it's called now, but. Squaw Rock stuff. I thought they changed the name. I, it, it shows up as Squaw Rock on my phone whenever I go to identify it. Oh, okay. Hey, yeah. Walt said it's Squaw Rock. He's like, oh, they used to call it Squaw Rock. It's called Squaw Rock, though. Okay, good, good, good. Because it's just South Chagrin Reservation, mm -hmm. which is awesome. How far do you guys live from South Chagrin? I live about 20 minutes. Coach Haywald lives like five minutes. Yeah, he lives right there, he said. Yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's, it's Bentleyville, yeah, Arkansas, and Solon. Um, because the other falls, the uh, Quarry Rock, you know Quarry Rock? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's the next set of falls up. The, the Bentleyville Police uh, Department's up on the hill, and then you go down the hill. It's Solon Road, and you turn off a of Solon Road. That, that's a better rock, actually. That's okay. a better set of falls, especially for my kids, because it's got a real long run to it, whereas those are choppy, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like those, though. I mean, they're cool. They're easy to climb up. Um, but the quarry rocks the next one up, and then I, there's a secret one that I told you down the river because nobody knows about it. Hey, Aldo, I don't even know the name of that. You got to go check that out, though. I don't even know the name of that, but go check that out. And we're, I've never seen, I've seen a a family pass through, and I've never seen people like hang out and camp out like we did the other day. I want to check it out. I'm excited. It's really cool, and it's a good long run, and then there's another set of falls at the end of it. And I saw that, how I saw that one day, we were just driving and I looked over and I'm like, look at those waterfalls. My wife said, let's go check it out. So we parked and hiked and it was actually this past winter. It was this past winter and we hiked like a couple miles in the winter and we found it. But that's a beautiful area, man. That's cool. And that's, um, there's another cool one up by you, by John Carroll, you, well, yeah. you where you live, Euclid Creek. Yeah. You could creek the uh, the Burnett brothers. Their sister lives at the top of that, like hill and cliff. Her really? backyard leads out into that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and that's how I found out. He's like, my sister. If you walk out of her backyard, you'll walk off that cliff. I was like, no way. So yeah, we were taking. Uh, we went there last week, and it was flooding and stuff crazy last week. Dude, Squaw Rock. You couldn't see the bottom shelf of it last week. Oh, it was, it was, yeah. I got to show you, I'll send you a couple links. I did a hike there last week because I, I go out chasing waterfalls, you know, goop, being goofy. Um, and uh, I went to the, the falls of the Chagrin. I went to Squaw Rock. I went to Quarry Rock. I went to those other falls that I've been telling you about that are hidden. I went to one other set of falls I can't remember, but I did it like on flood level. Okay. Terrifying. Terrifying, dude. 
terrifying. Yeah. You got to go check them out on flood level. You don't want to go in them or near them. Okay. Because it's a game over situation. You, it, you don't live. The recirculating current would just like batter you into the ground. Like you wouldn't be able to get out. No, but I want to check out still. But the, but the power is like amazing. I love the power. So, and then, all right. So you saw me and I'm like, what's up, dude? And you came over. Did you, were those river shoes you had on? Yeah, they were yeah. kayaking shoes made of parachute cord. Are those the Keens? Yeah. Yeah, I'm a Keen man. I'm a Solomon man now. Solomon's the best boot you can get, in my opinion. I did all my hikes last summer in Solomon's. Okay. I got about three or four pair of them. They're amazing. If you, if you ever want to go do, like, real cool hikes. Solomon's. Like, Rocky Mountain National Park. You want to go to, like, Mount Rainier and all the – Solomon is the boot. Like, I got, like, a six-inch boot. It's awesome. You got to check that. It's cool stuff. But where you live is really cool. Do you, Sam, do you live – so you go to John Carroll now. Mm -hmm. Beachwood is under a mile from John Carroll. Yeah, I live with my parents right now. How is that? It's awesome. I love it. Yeah. Don't, don't say that. No. I mean, my parents and I, we, we get along and, you know, I, I'm, I'm not super mischievous. So I think it's like, you know, I come home at a reasonable hour and we all help out. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and then, so you got, you, um, you went to Beachwood High School. When did you graduate from Beachwood? 2014. 2014. So you've had kind of a, a non-traditional path, right, Sam? Yes. Yeah. Your path started out, your state champ in 2014. You and what's – you had another – you guys had another state champ that year, didn't you? Ryan Harris. Harris. Yeah. Harris's old man – oh, my God. Harris's old man's a piece of work. Oh, oh yeah. my God. That guy is hilarious. He's a funny dude. Crap yard. <laughs> He owns a scrapyard, right? Uh, yeah, he does something with the steel. And I'm not sure he what it is. He owns a scrapyard. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So, listen, one of the greatest stories ever at the Burnett Train Camp, because Ryan used to come to the Burnett Camp. Did you come to the Burnett Train Camps, too? A couple times, yeah. Yeah, Ryan was at a lot of them. Then there was, I know you obviously know this guy, Greg Marmoros. Yeah. Okay. Greg Marmoros. <laughs> Greg Marmoros was cheating. We were playing Matt Wars. Scott uh -huh. and I were in college. Greg Marmoros must have been eight, nine. He could have been six, seven, eight, nine years old. How old's Greg Marmoros? I don't even know. I think he's 30. Okay. So this would have been – geez, oh, Pete. Greg Marmoros, is, this is 2003. Okay. 2000, no, it was earlier. 2001, 2002, 2001, 2002. That makes Greg Marmoros how old? 10 or 12? Yeah. 12 years old, 11 years old. Marmoros gets pulled because it's Matt Wars and you got to pull the other person into your zone and then they're out. Yeah, yeah. Marmoros is a little wet dog, little wet rat, right? Like little tiny guy. Everybody gets, starts ganging up on Scotty and we're pulling Scotty Burnett across and Marmoros comes out because he's out and he starts pulling scotty and scotty burnett lost his mind and the marmoros kid was like <laughs> screaming at you're a cheater you're nothing but a cheater and he like dude he lost his mind he was speaking in like tongues i don't even know the words he was yelling at marmoros is like a little little tiny kid he was i don't even think he was big in high school right uh he was like six foot two and yeah but he was like a 19 pound yeah yeah, so imagine him as an 11, 12-year-old getting screamed at by Scotty Burnett. Oh, um, ridiculous. Dude, it was ridiculous. But, okay. And then the the Harrises would come around. Beachwood's just always had really tough guys, man. Just really good, really good tradition of wrestling there. Yeah. Were you guys were, – were you two the last two state champs for Beachwood? Yes. So they've kind of had, like, a little bit of a downturn, huh? Uh, yeah, well, they – um. Ryan Peters, re he took over the youth program again. So they're – right now they're, they've got, like, a ton of kids out in the youth program, so they're rebuilding. Okay. So Peters runs the youth program. And yep. then um, is Grossman a Beachwood guy? Did Aaron, you, yeah. You want the Beachwood? Yep. He lives in Aurora now. Yes. Okay. But he went to Beachwood. Yep. I, 
dude, and there's another, some other guy I met. Oh, my God. This guy approached me. He was a couple-time state placer. I think he was a state finalist for Beachwood. His name is Weiss. Tommy? Oh, my God. This guy rolled up on me at the uh, yours truly. Was he a state finalist? Yeah, he came in second. And I think Dan Tank beat him. Dan Tam- Tank is from Genoa. Okay. Genoa and O'Carver are next to each other. Is that related to Kirk Tank? Kirk Tank's dad. Okay. Uh, so the Weiss guy was like, oh, dude, he rolled up on me, and I was just eating dinner with my family. We were literally minding our own business. I had a wrestling shirt on. And he was like, he was asking me, like, does Dan Tank look as good as me? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, actually, he looks better than you because he's an airline pilot. He's, Dan Tank's, like, in amazing shape, right? And the guy kept – he asked me three or four times, and I was like, this is bizarre. Does that sound like something that Weiss would do? I, I, don't, I don't know him too well. I see him running all the time. Okay, okay. So then he told me that the thing he was most proud of is his kid was a Rhodes Scholar. Yeah, I think he went to Harvard. His kid went to – Cornell and was a Rhodes Scholar. Yeah. He's like, oh, my kid's a Rhodes Scholar. It's the thing I'm most proud of. And I was like, well, awesome. I think he does commercial real estate or real estate or something. I think so. His, his yeah. parents' backyard backs up to my backyard. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the dude kept asking me if he if, – does, does Dan Tank look as good as me? And I'm like, I don't know. I'd have to ask my wife, but I don't think she know. I, I He looks better, actually. I don't think he liked that answer. But, um, yeah, he was – you guys got some characters over there. Yeah. I hope I'm not one of those characters. <laughs> All right. So, 2014, you're a state champ for, for Beachwood, right? Yep. Out of high school, where do you go immediately? Northwestern. I went out to Evanston. How long were you there for? Like a little bit over a year. I went, yeah. Dorm? Dorm or no dorm? Yeah, I roomed with – Um, actually, I roomed with Stevan Michi, who then transferred to Michigan. Are you and Stevan the same age? Yeah. Are you both yeah. 2014 grads? We're both going to be seventh-year seniors next year. Okay, so the difference is – so let's – okay, I want to talk about the main differences here. Yeah. There's Division One. there's Division Three. There's NCAA Division One. there's NCAA Division Three. There, and there's way – there's huge differences. Rules mainly are the difference. Um, Stevan has hit, like, these real weird – he's an Olympian. He will be an Olympian. Um, and then you got the hiatus. You yeah. guys can pause. D3 can pause. Yeah. D1 has a clock, and Stevan has actually hit, like, multiple loopholes with Olympic red shirts, right? I think he's the first to ever take two Olympic red shirts. Well, yeah, because – but but it was just – it's this weird thing that's happened, right? Yeah, yeah. With him, his is just, like, this weird thing. He had this weird thing that happened. And he transferred Big Ten to Big Ten. But what was the biggest difference you noticed, Sammy, about Division One to Division Three now? Um – I guess Division Three is more, which I kind of liked better. It's it's more on your own. I think Division One, it was like you better lift at six a.m. And Division Three is, hey, just get your lift in. And I don't know. For me, I felt like when I was getting it in on my own, I felt like it gave me a little bit more of a mental edge than when someone was forcing me to do it. So I I, I kind of like that environment a little bit better. So you don't like the? Uh, I don't want to say gun to your head, but <laughs> yeah. It's really – it's high pressure. You yeah. High pressure. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I enjoyed it. It was you – know, it's different, though. What's crazy in Ohio is we've had so many amazing guys come out of D3 because the big knock in Ohio is, oh, you won, oh, you won D3. Um, it's state title. Sorry. It's a state title. I don't care what anybody says. You know who else won D3 in Ohio? Jay Jaggers won D3 a couple times. Four, I think. Uh, Logan Stever, Hunter Stever, uh, Harry Lester, Olympian. Um, you know, the list goes on. Tommy Rollins was a, a two-time NCAA champion. Dude. So, like, when I bring that up, then yeah. they're like, oh, oh, to an outsider, you know, someone looking in, they're like, wait a minute, why are people knocking D3? Well, mm-hmm. the, depth, the depth isn't same in D, it, it's not the same in D3. We can both agree on that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a state title is a state title, right? Yeah, I'd say. I mean, to me, at least, I don't know. And if you look at some of our all time, Nathan Tomasello, he's a D3 champ multiple times. And then they, they switched in the middle of their CVCA, went up and down. Yeah, yeah. Because we, we, he was D2. 
I won state the same year he did. He was D2, I was D3. Same weight? Yeah. And, okay, so what did you go as, Sammy? A 33 or a 25? What, what did you go to Northwestern as? I think I was, I was recruited as a 33. Um, actually, Mark Haywald helped me get recruited. So that, that was kind of the connection there. How? Cause, so Drew Periano was the head coach at Northwestern, and he was the graduate assistant for Mark at John Carroll. So he coached Mark. And I, I wasn't, like, heavily recruited out of high school. So I remember – I was like, I really wanted to go to Northwestern. And I think uh, Haywald kind of hooked me up with Drew and, and got us in contact. So Drew starts recruiting you. I like yep. Drew. Yeah, he's, he's awesome. Drew, Drew, Drew something else. Um, so Drew recruits you. The Big Ten's a whole nother deal. When you got there, were you like, okay, this is a whole nother deal? Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, it's not what I was used to for sure. What are you used to? What was Beachwood like when you guys were at Beachwood? Because obviously you guys, like I said, you've had some amazing talent come out of Beachwood, right? Yes. Well, I was really well coached. I had Coach Dugan Bentley and Mike Arnold were, were coaches at Beachwood. So they were, they were really, really awesome coaches. But the depth of the teammates, I mean, you, we had Ryan Harris and we had a couple state qualifiers. But the, I don't know, the, the rooms in a Division One room were, was definitely different. And weaknesses were exposed very you know I thought like I you know I kind of walked in there with my chest held high like I had the greatest technique in the world and that was definitely a rude awakening so you get there did you hit the growth when did you hit the growth spurt when did you get big and become like a well because I saw you yesterday I'm like this dude because you qualified on NCAs this year at 165 right 157 I was 65 last year I was 57 this year you qualify at 65 yep so you qual think of you get what I'm saying like you're you're big you're you're, you don't look like a 119 or a 125 or a 33, 41. I mean, uh, you're every bit of a 165 if you want to be. Yeah. Um, well, I hit a growth spurt probably – well, I think it was right when I came home from, from Northwestern, I kind of hit a growth spurt. And, and then uh, – so you left wrestling, right? Like how long did you leave the sport of wrestling for and not touch a mat or anything? Uh, I think – Two well, I, I coached for one year. I coached at St. Ignatius with Coach Sullivan, and that that was a lot of fun. But I, the last time I competed was at the University Nationals in 2015. Okay. And the first time I competed again was the fall, like November of 2018. Okay. So it was like three and a half years. You were off the mat for a while. Yeah. You, know, you weren't in college at all as a full-time student yes because that uh, yeah, well, I was part I was part-time right when yeah. I started you got to be under 12 hours because mm -hmm. that's the rule in division two or division two and three I believe you can take a hiatus yes and that's what you actually did yeah so you burned all your d1 eligibility in those years mm -hmm. once your clock starts in d1 you got to have like a, it would have to be like mental illness war or something like that for you to get those yeah. years back right yes so you burn through those years, mm -hmm. but they have the, – it's the hiatus thing. If I'm getting this right, I think this is right, yes? Yeah, it was not intentional that way. I did not intend to come back to wrestling. What, where were you at with it? Tell, tell me what the intent was and, and where you were with wrestling. I think – I mean, when I was at Northwestern, I, I had a lot of, like, mental and physical illness that when I – I came home and had to deal with it. And I basically, I had doctors telling me like, yeah, we don't think it's a good idea for you to wrestle anymore. And uh, I kind of had written it off as competing and I thought I was done, but uh, I don't know. I, I started lifting and I started getting back in shape and I don't know. I saw what coach Haywell was doing at John Carroll and I couldn't stay away. How, like what, what's the depth of out of shape? What's that mean? When you say I, I what, what's the depth? Tell me the depth. I'm talking uh, right now. I hit the 260 quarantine, right? I hit the 260 quarantine. Okay. That's I'm at the depth of out of shape right now. What's the depth of out of shape for Sam Gross? Uh, I hit 208 pounds. You hit 208 pounds? Uh, yeah. So I, I think when I decided I was done wrestling, I basically, I, I was eating fast food all the time and I wasn't, I don't think I worked out for like a year. So it was. I mean, it didn't work out for a year. Like, I go hiking with my kids. I don't really call those workouts, but I'm out being active, and we do three, four miles, right? You're mm. doing that stuff, right? 
Uh, rarely. I don't know. I, it was pretty, it was pretty bad. Well, cause I mean, my diet was so bad that I had, I had no energy. I was, I mean, I would go on hikes and stuff, but I don't think I stepped foot in a weight room or a wrestling room and really kind of trashed my body. Were you just like, I'm just gonna live around here, get a degree and maybe do finance someday. My dad has a finance company. I think I'm just going to do that. I, I think that was, that was the idea. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Dude, when I saw you yesterday, I was like, Dan's in pretty good shape, man. Wearing, wearing a, a sun's out, guns out muscle shirt. So you, you're, so you changed your physique back to like that of a college wrestler. Yeah. How old are, are you and Stevan the same age? Yes. So I'm 24. Yeah, you're you're 24. 24. Okay. Will you be 25 by the NCAA tournament next year? Yeah. My birthday's in August. So you're going to be 25. And, you know, crazier things have happened. I talked to Sonny Marchetti. John Marchetti won D3 as a 30-year-old. Third, okay. Yeah. John Marchetti was done like you were, but mm-hmm. he's still training uh, Sonny. And he was out just wrestling and, like, coaching and training with his brother at Lassen Junior College. And uh, uh, Wartburg – sorry, not Wartburg. Augsburg was recruiting their 25-pounder. And they were like, hey, we're looking for a 25-pounder. Like, we don't want to give you this 25-pounder. How about this guy that's training with us? His brother was Juco champ. They're like, all right. And John, John Marchetti went to Augsburg and won D3 as a 30-year-old. Oh, my God. That's an Ohio guy, right? There you yeah. go. North Kitten. So, and then I think he went to Minnesota out of the gate. And Augsburg is – it's right by it, – it's Minnesota. Yeah, yeah, they're really good. Yeah, so I don't know if you know, they, they do some real uh, wacky stuff, Augsburg and Wartburg. Did you know that? I, I knew the rivals. I don't yeah, know. and they do a lot of like – like somebody told me a couple years ago at NCAA Finals, they had a guy that was like a fifth or sixth-year senior, and he was an undecided, undecided major. <laughs> <laughs> or you're going to have an MBA, you know what I mean? Like, hey, what is your undergrad in, Sam? Economics. Oh, perfect. I'm, so, so you and I were talking about the shutdown, right? We'll have to come back. We're going to circle around. I promise. I promise. Um, my wife's always like, oh, look, a squirrel. You know, like I, I, I dart around. But, okay, so you're out of wrestling. Uh, you're going to do finance. Or did you, were you like, I'm going to live in Beachwood. I'm just going gonna, gonna to stay in Beachwood and, and do the family business. Is that, is that where your head was at when you were out of it? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I was kind of like – I'm. You know, well, I identified as a wrestler my whole whole life. And in high school, I saw a sports psychologist, and he's like, you know, you got to have more than your sport as a part of your identity, which I was just like, you know, I said, absolutely, I will. And then I realized uh, that I did the exact opposite of what he said, and I made wrestling my identity. And then I was, I was like a lost puppy for a while. I had no – like, one time someone came up to me, and they are like, what do you like to do for fun? And I had no idea. I was, I was like, I don't know. I usually wrestle, so, so then, uh, yeah, I thought I, I guess I kind of just identified. Yeah, with it. So What's in, up? One these, in one of these interviews, somebody was like, "I don't have any hobbies." Todd Haverdo, uh, Todd Haverdo, Todd Haverdo was like, yeah, "I just, I, I don't have hobbies." Right? And he's got, I think he's got three daughters. Mm-hmm. I think he's really into his daughters and whatever they're doing, and then it's, and then it's the Brexville wrestling team. Okay. Well, right? so I had the opportunity to develop hobbies, but. And, and and stuff and kind of learn about myself and uh, yeah I was the, I was a finance guy yeah so now that you've almost been forced right like real world grabbed a hold of you and you were forced into like the real world how detached from it like besides so what did you was there a year where there was no Saint Ignatius and no wrestling what did you do besides deep fast food did you work yeah yeah I worked so I, I worked um I guess you could call it that I my I and my dad hired me at his company as like the the scanning guy so I scanned papers for like a year so you were a scanner yeah was it did you have an econ degree yet no no so that was I I had one year of school under me I took a year completely off of school and was just scanning and one of the lips did what you did the one that went to Purdue Kevin Kevin did what you did didn't he I think so yeah well he's working for his dad at Merritt Brass right now yeah, Kevin did what you did. He took like a year, a couple of years off, and and that's not normally how you guys roll. 
right? Like there, you have to have a purpose. You're not allowed to just like live in mom and dad's basement and uh, be a high school or a college dropout. That's not the deal, right? Right. What did they, what did they eventually say to you, Sam? My parents? Yeah. What did, when did, when did this, when was the, when, where was the, what's the aha moment for you? I got to get back in this. I in can't wrestling. Play the wrestler. What was your aha moment? I'm 208 pounds. It sucks to tie my shoes. Uh-huh. When did to tie my shoes? Trust me. I know how you, how you must've felt there, but what's, what was your moment? So, you know, I, I really don't want to give him credit, but it, there was a, there was a kid on our team, Mitch chicken in. He was from Jackson Milton and he, uh, he was on our coaching staff a little bit this year. And I, I was hanging out with him, and I, I remember I, I, I had a Jimmy John sandwich in my hand, and I was just disgusted with myself. And he looked at me, and basically, he was like, what are you doing? Like, don't be a fallen hero. Like, get your butt back in gear. Like, you're a pretty good wrestler. Like, you got to do this. And, like, I think I walked out of there, like, I was almost in tears. and Because I, I had never had someone who just confronted me that closely and basically said, like, you're not doing things right. And... I don't know, like the next day, I think I got back in the weight room and, and I'm cool. Cause I was technically on the team, but I was, I would go to practice and, and didn't do anything else. So then I got were back. You 208? Were you 208 pounds? I think around, yeah. Oh, I think when I started, yeah, I was about 200. So when you're on the team and you're not right. Okay. You're not right. Are you wrestling in the practices as a 208 pounder? Yeah. I think there's a, there's a picture on the on the website and it's it's bad. Don't look at it. When you were, yeah, I'm ask, I'm actually gonna ask. Hey, can, I, I was gonna say, hey, can you send me? Some, I'm not gonna like. I'll, I'll send you. Come on, man. Send I'll, me some pictures. I'll, Do I really have any room to make fun of someone who's a fat guy? Come on. I'll, I'll send you some pictures. Send me a couple of pictures because it's just like fascinating to me because it's a great story because, um, you know, Mark and I were talking and he's like, he was just like so impressed with how. You know, how you, how you changed your body. That was the biggest thing he said. He's like, the guy changed his body and he looks better now than he did as a 25, 33, 41, whatever he was trying to be at Northwestern. And I think Drew complimented you as well, is what Mark was saying. Drew, Drew was so impressed with how you changed your body. Mm-hmm. Zeke, you know, you look like, I mean, I just can't imagine you at 208 pounds. Especially after seeing you yesterday and remembering, like, watching you wrestle the state tournament. You know what I mean? I've always been in great shape whenever I've seen you in person. You know, like, and when you see someone as a kid, most kids are in pretty good shape, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's just wild to think that you got the 208 pounds. So you, how did they bring you back onto the team when you're like this frumpy, dumpy dude that's just like chilling? I, I don't It must have been the most frustrating thing in the world to watch. I'll, I'll have to talk because I was just – I don't know. Like I would go to practice and I did, I put in the bare minimum. I was, cause I think in my heart, I was like, I'm not ready to compete. And then like, I was getting ready to get in. Hey, Walt's like, Hey, why don't you, why don't you compete? And I was like, okay. And then I broke out in skin funk. And then eventually I ended up breaking my ankle and, and had surgery. So the season was, and I think that was like, that was like a higher power helped me out. Cause I was not mentally ready to compete yet. Jeez. Oh, Pete. So you, that most people they they phone it in, man. They're done. They're done at that point. Like, hey, I'm I'm overweight. Um, I got the funk, right? Whatever you got, and then I need an ankle surgery. That and you're hurt. <laughs> you break your ankle and you're hurt. Yeah. Right? Like most people phone it in there, Sam. Like most people, I'm like they're done. They're like you were pretty mentally exhausted anyway, right? Why why not phone it in and like who who was the support on that one? Because Mark Haywald is just like. You know, like, he's not really – he's not super invested. He's, like, doing you a favor at this point, right? I think so, yeah. Right? Like, yeah. so, you're big. Well, I think that's – he just cares about everybody. You know, I've seen the way that he he works with the backups and the starters, and he – I mean, he he loves everyone on our team, and I think it's part part of just who he is. So, I, I think he, he kind of saw that there were bigger things to me than wrestling, but I think he also was, like, you know, I think he loves it. And is that the biggest difference you notice from D one to, to D three is, is the level, uh, I don't Well, I, it's such a, it's such a weird comparison because the, the level of maturity that I have as a, you know, 24 year old was way different than a 19 year old in college. So I, I don't know if it's a fair comparison. 
I'd like to, I would love to be in a D run room now and kind of see the difference. And what's crazy is you'll probably have the opportunity. If you want to, you can go coach. If you want to, you can go do that. And I think your story, and I mean, you got a great story and I think there's a lot to learn there. I think that these coaches now, it's not more about, uh, cause I know that Kilgore is out at uh, air force Academy and Sam Barber mm-hmm. and the other assistant coach, they're both D D three guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think you're seeing that more often that we're, we're starting to value this guy won the university nationals and was NCAA all American three or four times. We're starting to, there's a shift. I think people see the value of this person has valuable life experience. And another thing is there's a lot of fundraising. Yeah. yeah. Right? Obviously finance being your strength, that's something you could go and, and really benefit a division one team with if you cared to do that, you know what I mean? Because hindsight, as you say, you know, it's 2020, right? Hindsight's 2020 vision. You can see all the mistakes you're making as a, as a 19 year old in, you know, Chicago land, Evanston, Illinois. I mean, it's a lot to do there. And the other thing with that is they only got like a 22 man roster at Northwestern. Yeah. So they're pretty invested in every guy. Oh yeah. So they're, they're not like, you know, Ohio State can have 40 guys. They can have 35 or 40, whatever their roster limit. They can have 35 or 40 guys. And then I think they also have tryout periods for guys. So I they can put guys on longer who they don't have to roster spot. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I love – I mean, that that staff was awesome. Uh, Coach Storniolo, Coach BB, Timmy, all those guys were just super I, – I love all those guys. Yeah, So so I think your story – really helps your case if you ever want to go coach and see the, the landscape of a D1 room. I mean, I don't know why someone wouldn't, hey, man, you want to be the volunteer? Yeah. Want to teach me how to fundraise? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that, that, that's something that's pretty, I don't know, it's pretty priceless. You can't really put a price on it. But um, I'll put you as a reference. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll just shoot the video to him. I'll shoot this video to him. Here you go. Here's the guy. But, uh, okay. So when he brings you back in and he finally gets you, so when'd you break your ankle? That was in 2018, like December, or 2017, the December. Okay. And then the year before is when you coached at Ignatius with Sullivan. Yeah. What was that like with, with Sullivan and, and what'd you do for that year? Were you on the mat much? I was, I was working out, well, Part of me, I, I got sick of wrestling heavyweights. It was, it was, you know, because I was the fat guy. So they, they put me with the heavyweights. So that was, that was part of it. I worked a little bit, a lot with their 220-pounder, who was a state qualifier. I worked a lot with um, Najee Lockett, who he transferred, but he was a freshman that year. He's going to Cornell next year. Yeah, I was so proud of him. Yeah, he was an awesome kid. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I was kind of just a, a dummy for that. I mean, I was working out with those guys. Wasn't showing much or anything. Okay, so you're just drilling with dudes and wrestling live with high school kids. Yeah. Okay, that's very different than, than now than being drawn into a, a, a college room. The Do perspective you, change is awesome, though. Well, yeah, because now you're in control of nothing. Oh, it's coaching is, is so much harder. You're in control of nothing, right? No. You're relying on high school kids and young men to make these decisions. They've got to make the right decisions. It's really hard, man. Um, where, okay. So did you have the intent? Why were you keeping yourself under 12 hours? Why were you keeping yourself not full-time? Was, the, was in, in the back of your mind somewhere was like, hey, I might wrestle again. Was that a thing? No, that I don't. So I think, like I said, I kind of wrote off wrestling as a competition. But I think just where I was at, I, you know, I took a year off of school. And you know, there was a lot going on in my life. So I thought I was just going to ease back into it and take. I, so I was part-time for a year. And then I enrolled full-time after that. What do you do? Was there ever a year when you weren't Ignatius where you just did nothing? That year you took off, did you just do nothing? No, no. You always okay. worked or did something. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I figured that wouldn't be a choice. I figured that – what do your parents say to you whenever you're in, like, a tough time? Like, what, how, how are they behind you and what do they say? Uh, I mean, they were, they were always super supportive. I mean, I was really fortunate. My parents were, have been super supportive in, in really everything, and – um, but yeah, they did not want me doing nothing. Yeah, that, that's, that's not the way, right? That's not the way. Like, I, I think that when you look at the generation today, 
some parents are like they're, they're permissive of that they, they, they're okay with it my wife told me she's like yeah our kids aren't gonna stay here they're gonna either go to school they're gonna have a job and if they stay here they're gonna pay rent you know what i mean like she's real into like making sure that they're doing something because her dad made her get a job you know before like her dad used to make her cook uh, dinner one night a week you know it's like they made him have responsibility and i think that's the best thing you can do for your kids right and it sounds like your parents did it the right way you know what i mean they weren't just like hey sam you can get some fast food and go hang out and play video games i don't think that doesn't no. sound like that was a thing so uh, okay so moving forward you have the ankle surgery um how much rehab did you have to do with ankle ankle surgery and what and what did you do to your ankle so i i broke the uh, oh god I'm not sure if it's the fibula or the tibia, the little one, the smaller one. You bro the non-load-bearing bone. Yeah, yeah, so but I broke you, that. You need that to do high-level, uh, high-impact contact sports, okay. So, yeah, and then I, just, I went to just rehab. It wasn't too much. It was like, you know, four months of going to physical therapy, and I was kind of back to normal. Okay, so it wasn't terrible, wasn't it? Yeah. What'd they have to do, uh, plate? Plate yep. and screws? Yeah. Did they remove them yet? No. Am I going to need that? They, they Usually, if it depends if it mends or how hard it goes, and you have the option. Because I have screws in my knee. And as you know, I, I don't like to go through airport security. Right? <laughs> I get patted yeah. down. And they ask me. They always ask me. I'm like, yeah, I have screws in my knee. And that thing, that scanner that I won't go through, picks that up. Oh. X-rays pick that up. You know what okay. I mean? Which they tell you that that scanner is radio waves, but... I don't know that technology, so I don't really, I don't really tend to uh, believe much that they're telling me there. You know what I mean? But like, it's wild because you gotta like, uh, you know what I mean? Like, you can have that removed, and then sometimes your body will uh, attack something foreign that's in there because it's not supposed to be in there. So you get back to wrestling. How was your ankle? It you was fine. It was, it was all ready to go. So that year, you make the NCAA tournament one sixty five. Mm -hmm. yeah. How about that coming back from being did you did you drop weight a, after you had the ankle surgery did you like change your diet and stuff uh yeah well, yeah I dropped I dropped a little bit of weight and then in the fall that that's when I kind of made that decision to get my butt in gear and and start eating a little bit healthier and kind of kind of give it a not not a college try give it give it a real try and um that was that was I started at 74 actually and uh then then ended up dropping to 65. Were the guys massive at 74? Were like grabbing them and moving them was like was it like whoa? Yeah yeah it was well yeah well I was I was not moving either my dad describes it as like watching like the guy who should have retired from in the NFL like five years prior but is still there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you're you're wrestling seventy four. When what's the aha moment on one sixty five? I think. Well, I, then I started. I saw a nutritionist, and I was like, man, maybe I should do sixty five. I don't know. I don't know when the aha moment was, but I I I started just like getting my nutrition on right, and that was a huge part. I mean, I still love nutrition now, and making sure I you know I get the proper nutrition because I, I didn't realize how much it actually made me feel so much better when I was eating the right foods. And then um. Mark, what's Mark Haywald say during all this? Is he just like supportive in the background? What's what's his what's his whole like take on everything? Like I know his take, but how how to, in your perspective, what's Mark like this whole time? Ah, uh, I think he's. I mean, he's super supportive. I think he's. I mean, he he was all on board everything I I wanted because I think he saw that there was some potential there. So he was, and you know, I was I was doing well in the room and stuff. So I think he he kind of started to see because that's like when the like the, it started clicking again. I started loving it and I started kind of getting my motion back. Yeah, cause I think that's hard when you like lose the love for something and then, to, and then everybody spends the rest of their life trying to find that. What, what did I love about this? Right. What yeah. did you love about it? What do you think I, you love about it? I appreciate it so much more now, at least. But why? What's the, what's the thing that you want them to appreciate? Just, just like, I was, what I was talking about to my teammates and I, I said the other day that I, uh, I was like, he's a former athlete. And I was like, yeah, I'm a former, former student athlete, <laughs> you know, cause that, that's, that's who I was. And I think just kind of being able to, 
you know, accept like that, that I don't have a whole lot of time to do this. And, you know, I'm getting an opportunity to do this again. I'll tell you the story. I was at the regional tournament last, uh, as a 165 pounder and the national anthem played and I went over to my dad and I was like, dad, like three years ago, I never thought I'd be competing to try to make the NCAA tournament. And like before the tournament starts, my dad and I are both crying while the national anthem's playing. And it was just, just because I was able to appreciate like the opportunity to compete is, I mean, right. What, what would you, I mean, to compete again, I've got one more year for the rest of my life. And, and I don't know, it's just a different level of appreciation that I love. So you just like, really, you, it, the, the light went on, man. Like, I just appreciate this. I like the fact that I got a second chance. Yeah. I, I didn't become a, what did the guy call you? Fallen hero? What did he call yeah, you? He called me, yeah, Mitch, Mitch taken in. So if he's watching. Fallen hero, huh? Mm -hmm. So, okay. What, what place did you take at 65 in the region? I got third. So you, you have to take third, don't you? Yeah. So who did you beat in the Kansi semis and who did you beat for third and fourth? Um, Kansi semis I beat, I can't remember his name. He was from all of that. Um, I can't remember his name, but then for third and fourth, I beat a kid who from Mount Union, he beat me twice that year. He pinned me and he majored me. Really? Who'd you beat? Uh, his name is Michael McIntyre. Okay. So you beat Michael McIntyre. How bad you beat it? I think it was four to one. And he housed you twice. He kicked the tar out of you twice. Uh, I guess so. Yeah. You know, a major and a pin. I got. Yeah, I, yeah it was. I, I would call that getting housed. Yeah. I mean, you didn't feel good after either one of those losses, did you? No. Like uh, an overtime loss, and uh, it was close. I mean, he no, beat it was the tar out of you twice. It sounds like. Mm -hmm. That's nice. That's got to be good, right? And then um, NCAs, how did you do at 65 at NCAs? I went one and two. I made the round of 12. So you lost in the round of 12. Who, who beat you in the blood round? Uh, he was from – his name was – oh, shoot. He was the number two seed. His name – oh, my God. I, I usually have the best memory. I can't oh, remember. Match? Yeah, I think it was like five to three. So you're I, right lost to, I lost to the champ first round. Oh, my God. What a – those draws, dude. The wild thing about D two and D three is the I love the parody. The yeah, oh yeah, amazing. Because at the D one, the parody, you know, you got your idea that's going to be a Penn State, Ohio State, Oklahoma State, Iowa, right? You can throw a Virginia Tech in there, Cornell. I mean, we could pepper some NC States on the rise, Michigan, Northwestern, right? North, okay, Northwestern has had obviously had some great teams, but like. You know, it's just like, you know, you know, it's going to be Big Ten guys. You know, it's going to be Big 12 guys. And you know that Cornell, right? You know, Cornell is going to be formidable, Lehigh, right? You know, you know that those are they're going to have squads. And then obviously Princeton's on the rise. But there's just not a ton of parity in D1. No. I went to the D2s. I called the D2s in 2014 mm -hmm. at Public Hall. And... Notre Dame College had a bunch of dudes win that weren't supposed to win, right? They beat a bunch of number one seeds, and it was, like, awesome. Obviously, Joey Davis was, like, the guy. Yeah. And then they won as a team. They had, like, five champs in a row. And I don't know if any of those guys were supposed to win besides Joey Davis. It was, like, awesome. Then they just rolled, dude. They rolled on everybody. But, like, they had guys that were, like, 36 and 0 that Notre Dame College beat in the finals. They're defending champs, 36 and 0. Right? Like in D1, normally that guy just wins. Right. But not not in, in D2 and D3, there's a ton of parody, right? Did you like that parody element to it? Yeah, I think so. I, I like that. I mean, every year, if you look at those brackets, you see a not seated guy make the finals every year. That's my point. Like, it's awesome. How often, like, it's a big deal in D1 if a non seated guy makes it, but it's happening every year in D2 and D3. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny because now Hayden Brawny and uh, uh, Nick Mason work for my brother. Mm -hmm. They're Tiffin guys. They're, they led the country in pins the last two out of the last three years. And it's like just more carefree and there's not as much pressure in D2 and D3. And I, I like that. I like that element of it. I think that's cool. I got a nephew who's a, a junior this year at Oak Harbor. He won the district. And, like, I'm kind of encouraging him. I think, I think he should be a D2 guy. 
Okay. You know what I mean? A D2, D3 guy, I like – I think he'll get more enjoyment out of it. Mm -hmm. And he's pretty good, and I think he can be a multiple-time All-American. But, man, D1 – and he'll qualify for NCAAs in D1. If he goes D1, he'll make the NCAAs in, at, at uh, 197 pounds. He'll make it two or three times. Okay. I don't know if he'll ever be an All-American. But there's so much pressure on being an All-American in D1. Yeah. So much, dude. Like, like I hate to say it, gun to your head. Right? And it's like we put a lot of pressure on these guys. You know, someone wins three or four Ohio State titles, right? What do we automatically assume if they go D1? They should be what? National champ. National champ, All-American, right? And, and you know, it's just like – a guy like Josh Demas goes, and he, and he never he's never an All-American. Well, it's like all of a sudden now people diminish what Josh Demas did. Well, I don't because I understand how hard it is for him to be a D1 All-American. I get that, right? Johnny DeJulius. I get, yeah. I get those guys are really good. And if you look at their laundry list of guys they beat, they were right there. They just – the NCAA tournament just was – you just never put it together at the NCAA tournament fully. You know what I mean? And it's like, for people to diminish what those guys have done, it, like, it bums me out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Wow, oh, they never got it done. Well, okay, they're, they're great coaches for it now. Both guys are coaching on the D1 level. That's, like, crazy to me because we, we do put a lot of pressure on people. Would you agree with that? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I just don't like that because wrestling media is really bad. Like, wrestling media is really bad with it, right? I mean, they're just – they're awful, and it bums me out. Really bums me out. Where did we meet in the airport? Were we in Oklahoma City? Yeah. I, was I interviewing the crazy heckler guy? Robin Ficker. Yeah, I was, I was interviewing that dude, right? Yeah. And I ran into you. That's right. And then you think I'm a crazy person because I won't go through the body scanner. <laughs> No, I, th I thought it was awesome because you told me you were a history teacher, and for your student, you can't teach what you don't preach. Yeah, I'm not. I'm, I, yeah, I'm, I go. I, I won't go through the body. To this day, I don't go through the body scanner. If they did some weird thing with my kids, I'd probably go through the body scanner. They were like, "Wow, you gotta go with you know whatever." If they wanted to separate me from my I'm, whatever, that's that's a different level, as you'll find out as a father someday. Um, and it was just like yesterday I was talking to my one kid, my two year old. He wants to just barrel into life and we were at the top of the falls and you got to just pay attention to them i don't think there's any real danger of them being like how far back we were but as a dad you figure that out right yeah you know okay so let's talk about the most disappointing year uh in the history of of uh of uh our your generation my generation you ready yeah 2020 <laughs> 2020 sammy gross 157 you're down to 57. When did you, did you come in right away at 57 this year? No. Well, I started at, at 65, and there was a couple roster battles. We had um, Luke Rykowski at 165, who was also a qualifier. And there was like a log jam. We were both there, and it was best for the team and best for me to go to 57. Did he qualify? Yeah. Okay, so you guys made the right move. I think so. I mean, we won't know if it was the right – no one will ever know if it was truly the right move because they canceled the stinking tournament. Um, you guys in D2 were both on the mat. You guys were in Iowa. They were in South Dakota. You guys weren't far from each other, by the way. Yeah. Where were you guys? Cedar Rapids. You were in, yeah, I think you guys were a couple hours apart. Yeah, from So Falls. Yeah. Yeah, you guys weren't far apart, actually. I think it's only like two or three hours. Um, okay, so you're there. I've gotten a bunch of D2 perspectives, and Haywall told me the story, but I want to hear your perspective. Um, what, first of all, what place did you take in the region um, this past I, year? I ended up getting third. Third again? Yeah. You like the pressure cooker, huh, Sammy? I don't think so. <laughs> you just, that's just where you end up, huh? Uh, yeah, I, I got upset in the semifinals, but, you know, I had to battle back, which was – it's always good to battle back. Who'd you beat in the Conti semis? He was from Ohio Northern. I don't know his name. Okay. So you beat an Ohio Northern guy and then uh, third, fourth. It was an Olivet kid, uh, Cole Hirsch. Okay. So you beat two guys back to back, but you didn't have to come back and beat anyone who'd crushed you twice. No. Yeah. That, that, that's crazy what the, the, the Mount Union guy put it on you twice and then you beat him for third and fourth. Um. 
that we our John Carroll had a really good regional tournament that year. I think so. I had lost twice. I think out of our three national qualifiers, I think we all avenged at least one loss in that tournament. Dude, that's the best, man. And it's the end of the year, and those guys are all going home. Yeah, those guys all went home. So okay, so Sam, you're you're um, you qualify, you win for third and fourth. Walk me through the process. It's a two week, right? It's a two week from regionals to NCA. It's just like D1, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that whole two weeks, how'd you feel? I felt really good. We were, we were training hard. Cause so, every, I mean, I think we were on spring break the week before. So we were on spring break right after regionals. So it was basically like, I think the best training situation. We got to rest all day and train and, you know, relax and kind of rest our bodies. So it was, it was all, I felt really good. We, we were having a ton of fun. Um, it was Coach Haywall's birthday, par- birthday, and we kind of planned a surprise party for him. Like, we were just having just a really good time, and, and wrestling was going really well. And uh, I don't know, I, I think our, our team, we felt, I felt really prepared at least. So going into the tournament, you have, did you have, like, one last weight cut practice? No. We were going to. So we, we got there Wednesday. We worked out Wednesday, had a really good workout. And Thursday – we were planning on working out at like, I think like five thirty, and at 5 PM we got the news that it was canceled. So we didn't even get to have that weight cut workout. D one or D two, D three are Thursday or Saturday, Friday, Saturday tournaments. Mm-hmm. It's a two day tournament. Where were you sitting on the bracket? I was the six seed. You were the six seed. So you were, you were set up with the three. You're set up pretty good as a six, three. Six I, yeah, matchups I, I are great matchup. I liked it. If, if everybody doesn't get upset and then you got two unseated guys. Yeah. It's crazy. I, that's, I'm telling you, man, I love it. Going to those D2 and D3, it, it is not like anything else. And then your blood rounds Friday night too. Yeah. So, you know, if you place, yeah. yeah. If you're coming back for Saturday, you're an all American. Yeah. Which is just like D1. Right. You know, but it's, it's a, it's shortened by a day. Right. Um, the, what are the brackets, Sammy? 18. 18. And you were six. What do they seed up to? Eight? Yep. Okay. So, okay. What, what's Haywall? Tell me, tell me you're, you're going to get this last workout in five o'clock Thursday night. What's he coming? What, what's he say to you guys? Um, I think we found out before he did. No way. Or, or, or not before, not before he, well, so I think he, he had gone to a coach's meeting, like, 30 minutes before and they're and all the coaches are like we're going like we're doing this we're all here and then I think we saw that all d1 sports got canceled and he he's like the day before he's like I think d1s are gonna get canceled but we're already here we're gonna go and uh my parents pulled up to the hotel and uh they brought me my guitar I was gonna relax and play a little guitar (laughs) and I I went to go pick it up and they're like we heard it's canceled my dad said that yeah and I was like I don't think so and I went up to the hotel room. I got my guitar, and, and coach is like, "Yeah, it's canceled." And I went downstairs and told him, and uh, it was tough. Jeez, oh, Pete, dude, are you are you joking? Like, it, like when they say it to you, are you like, "This can't be real"? Yeah, it was. It was like a numbing experience. What do you do, Sam? What what's your what's your music? What do you play? Uh well, I'm not very good. Okay. Uh, what do you play? That's that, that. That's not the question. What do you? I play? like. Oh, I got it. I play acoustic mostly. I like playing a little bit of rock, a little bit of folk songs. What um, song? Give me your favorite song to play. My favorite. Ah, uh, I started playing a little Red Hot Chili Peppers yesterday. I was like playing Under the Bridge. That was a fun one. I oh. learned that. You know what I don't like? Um, whenever you put any of the music under your social media, like I'd be listening to, to I'll be listening to something, and they'll. Uh, they they will edit it and and I get like strikes like stri- they'll be like oh you can't have this I'm like yeah. oh, man what are you doing what are you doing here what are you doing here stop it you know um I I don't like that I, I like how I, I don't like how everything's got to be monetized dude when I go to like do a workout and you guys play music like if I go to a workout and someone's you know you know they're playing music that's what you guys do if I shoot a video. YouTube will flag the video and we'll yeah. demonetize it. I'm like, what are you doing? So the, everybody's there to watch the workout. They're watching the two guys scrap. They're not, they don't care about your song. Yeah. So now sometimes um, that you have a muting tool 
Oh, you can – oh, really? Yeah, it's stupid, though. But whatever. Um, I think we all know the playbook on YouTube and a lot of these uh, – a lot of our social media platforms, they're, they're ultra-restrictive. And um, if something doesn't align with, quote-unquote, their political agenda, they just – they it, they're private, though, and I get it. I understand how this works. I understand how the First Amendment works, but I also understand how private ownership works. So I'm not an idiot. So what, what you're increasingly seeing is people are going to these like new other platforms, if you haven't noticed. Are you on TikTok? I, I'm, a, I'm a 40 year old man. I just can't do it yet. <laughs> you, do you think I should be on TikTok, Sam? What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, don't know. Man. I'm not on TikTok. I, I am waiting for TikTok. Well, because you know what's happened. Facebook has become the soccer moms and me, right? It's become us. And then, um, Instagram's kind of still, still Switzerland, still neutral. Everybody can use Twitter, and it's a dumpster fire for information, right? Um, obviously, you're probably your favorite president, Donald John. Donald John, he he's a big fan of it. Mm -hmm. I, there's times that I think that they should take his phone from him. I think he, dude. I think he's. I think he's the one crafting those. You think you don't think it's his? Team? I don't think that's an eight. I don't, or, or it's like an aide who he's screaming at who's doing it. I think that's him. I think those are his thumbs doing that. And that's just my opinion. I'm naive, though. But, but yeah, like, I, yeah, it just, yeah. Are you TikTok? No, I've never been on it. Well, there you go. That, thank you. You're, so you're being sarcastic. Good. Because I don't want, I can't do it. This would be creepy. I'm a 40, you're about to be 41-year-old man on TikTok? Come on. And I see the videos and I can't tell what it is. And it's another thing for me to learn. And like I said, I'm old. No, I'm good. Um, I don't know if I'm ever going to want to be on a, a, a thing, a, a platform that my kids will be on. You know what I mean? Yeah. We'll, we'll see. I'll cross that bridge in six or eight, ten years. Hopefully longer. But I'm guessing it won't be. So, Sam, what's going through your head now that – the worst year on record for 330 D1 guys, um, 180 D2 and D3 guys. Like, what, what's going through your head? Uh, at, at the time or, or in – At know, the time, you, you got the guitar, it's canceled. What's going through your head? Uh, it's – it was like I, – I wasn't really – we were in shock kind of. Like, you know, when you hear this – I remember my parents had stopped in Chicago and they got like these, you know – like stuffed pretzels and I was like screw it I'm gonna have one and like I didn't even taste it it was like this cheese filled soft pretzel that like I tasted and I couldn't even taste it because it was just like my it didn't and it was this surreal experience bums me out <laughs> that I smile that you just woof this thing down but it's like you couldn't even enjoy it no and, and it was so I mean I saw our rival schools were crying you know there were some some people in our conference in the hotel and like some coaches came up and hugged me I saw some of our opponents were crying and we all hugged which was kind of a cool bonding experience right you've got people who you know normally we we are all are you know enemies and we're all together it's crazy misery loves company Sammy it does it's, it, it's true it's like a true thing man I, I think that's the only comfort that a lot of people have taken out of the whole thing it's just like such a miserable awful experience but at least at least somebody else didn't benefit, right? Yeah. I mean, everybody is in the same boat. Um, where do you go from from here now? Like, is the training, is it, are you, what did you do? What did you do? What did you do? What have you done? You don't look like you're still in great shape. You haven't gone on the, you haven't gone off the cliff and you still look like you're in great shape when I saw you yesterday. Thank you. I've, well, I've been having, this has been like one of the most fun training experiences. Um it's just the ability to adapt. So I do not have a gym at home. So I, I got to start getting creative. I went to, I went to Lowe's, I bought some cinder blocks and I bought a sandbag and I started throwing that and I started doing curls and I mean, I could do pull-ups and push-ups, but basically just getting creative with workouts. Yeah. I'd see a rock on a run and I would, you know, start rowing it and curling it and just kind of, kind of having fun with getting creative and being able to adapt. Yeah, man, that's a part of the deal. You got You have to figure it out at this point. Have you wrestled at all? No. You guys can. You no. can do whatever you want. 
I guess, yeah. I don't have a place to do it, though. Well, go out and start wrestling with my nephew. Drive to Oak Harbor. All right. Drive out into the sticks. I think he's, they, they have a, a wrestling room. You said he's 97? He, uh, he's a 182. All right. He's in the district at 182, and he probably weighs about 200 now. He just got invited to Iron Man at 195. I don't think there's going to be an Iron Man, but I told him to get to 220. I said, dude, you got to be at 220 because he's got one year left at Oak Harbor. Okay. And um, I said, he got to be 220. Why? I go, the guys are worse. But as you found out, you weren't a true 74, and the guys are just – they're that's – okay. So the breakdown is 97 heavyweight, kind of like high school, 220, 285. If someone's a big – talented athlete most of in this in this day and age everything's a, a single uh sport focus right mm-hmm. so what are the really good guys doing who weigh 220 pounds and above what are they doing what are they focused on they're playing football they're focused on football there you go you know why are why is 97 and heavyweight not as good in college well, what are your really good athletes doing who are 200 plus pounds playing football so I maintain that that's a thing. Now, listen, we're in a golden era right now at heavyweight, right? Oh, yeah. But Gable Steveson, uh, was it? Kassar won last year. He beat Gable Steveson in the finals. Derek White, a confirmed, uh, converted 197. Yeah, man, you got all different types of uh, – um, just they've got really good – Mason Paris, he's a world champion. Mm-hmm. The list goes on, right? Like one heavyweight's really good. I like the kid from uh, Clay, Central Michigan. Stencil, Matt Stencil. Yeah, I like him. My mom and dad went to that high school, and okay. all my cousins went to Clay High School. That's over by Oak Harbor. Okay. We, my mom and dad, where they live, we're closer to Clay High School than we are to Oak Harbor. Gotcha. And um. Yeah, there's a bunch of high schools we're closer to because it's out in the country and it's like flat and it's real weird when you go over there. Um, but yeah, like I, uh, Hilger, I like Hilger from Wisconsin. I like Wood from Lehigh, but he's done now, isn't he? I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah those are all guys who are, I mean. I mean, really, really, really good guys, right? I'm missing somebody. Oh, I feel terrible. Who am I missing? Mason Paris? I said Mason Paris. I like the Orndorf kid, the Orndorf kid who just transferred. I like him. Um, but, you know, heavyweight, we're in a really good situation right now. And I think a lot of those guys could go and play college football. Oh, yeah. Orndorf's dad um, was all – it was Pac-8 then. He was NCAA finalist, lost to Carlton Hasselrig. And he was all Pac-8 as a, a football player, a lineman. Oh, wow. Dave Orndorf. He's 5'10". <laughs> If you saw Dave Orndorff, you'd be like, wow, that guy? Yeah, he, and he's a good dude. But heavyweight, we're in a really good situation right now. So it's like those guys could all go play, probably play D1 football. You know, Mason Paris, we know good. Coach yeah. Sullivan did. Yeah. Mark Sullivan did. Yeah, there you go. Mark Sullivan was a freak at Ohio State. And then he had the twin brothers, right? Yes, I think they also played there. Yeah, they played at Ohio State. So, yeah, and there's a lot of that. My boss, Rich Frimmel. He was a D1 state champ for North Olmstead and Tom Milkovich. And he wrestled a year at the Big Tens for Ohio State. Um, he's my direct boss at Riverside, John R. Williams, where we're at. You know, it's just like it, – it, it makes sense. Luke Fickle, right? So, Luke Fickle, the coach at Cincinnati, um, that's something he's, like, said. He's like, I'll recruit any state champion above 170 pounds in Ohio. That's, like, a thing he says. Um, but, yeah. So, Okay. Anything planned coming up for you? Any trips for you yeah. anywhere? I'm going out to Pennsylvania this weekend. I'm going to go hiking. Where do you go, PA? Um, my parents have a condo out in Seven Springs. Where is that? It's um, you know where Ohio Pile is. Oh yeah, I know where that is. Like, I've hiked like, all that. It's like 20 minutes from Ohio Pile. What What are the Highlands called there? The uh, the Royal Highlands. Yeah, I I hiked all that. That's yeah. really cool, man. My nephew and I did a bunch of that. That That's really cool. Is that Ian, your nephew? No, uh, I have a nephew that's a – he is a uh, athletic trainer at Ohio University, Dawson Lott. Okay. My nephew and my sister's son. Him and I do a bunch of hiking. We do the Allegheny National Forest. Um, we 
I'd taken him to Alaska. We did a bunch of stuff. We did a bunch of things in um, Yosemite in California. We've done. We've done everything. Uh, Mount St. Helens. We've done Rainier. We've done a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Uh, Crater Lake. We do a bunch of Crater Lake stuff. Yeah. We've done a bunch of stuff. We did Denali, but we couldn't really do much at Denali. Um, Denali, you have to have an outfitter. And then it's like almost lottery to get into the park uh-huh. in Alaska. So yeah, it's, 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 uh, interesting. It's interesting when you go out West to figure out what you can and can't do. Denali is a different beast though. Denali is the size of like New Hampshire. Really? Denali's huge, dude. Damn. And it's ultra super wild and the terrain is super rugged. So you have to have an outfitter. Now, if you're a local, some of the locals might have it figured out where they can go in and out how they want to. Like, if you have someone who's a local, you know. Mm. But, like, you just can't roll up into Denali and do whatever you want. It's crazy. Denali's a different beat. There's, there's massive glaciers. I mean, it's, yeah. And you don't just go bebopping around on a glacier by yourself. If you're from Ohio, right? If you're from Alaska, that stuff's all, like, easy and commonplace. Um. So Ohio Pile is sweet. Have you run those falls yet? Uh, on whitewater rafting? Or, or just gone on the falls? No, have you run them? Have you gone over them? No. I'd run those. You're a little crazier than I am. Yeah, my best friend's like a nut job, and those aren't bad. Those aren't bad. I would do those. Because the thing with those is they're so safety. Mm-hmm. And then you're, a lot of them, they're probably running them in big boats. For whenever they do run them and they run them when they're low is my guess if you run them, Bro, I'm, so, I'm so jealous of you right now you're just you're hanging out with your kids doing all of that if you're living this quarantine up right yeah but they're 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 nuts like i had the i had to switch beds last night really they were beating each other up in the bed i was trying to sleep in so i just went to another bed <laughs> what they do they went over to the other bed that i was trying to sleep in and beat each other up there they're gonna be tough I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um, okay. What is your favorite experience with wrestling? What's the best thing you've ever done? Uh-huh. Being a part of the Beachwood team, going to Northwestern, John Carroll, traveling. Have you gone to Fargo? Kinda. K- kinda? Kinda? So, well, I, I never really – I played baseball in high school, so I never actually, like, trained super hard for Fargo. So I would kind of, you know – like play baseball all year, go to Solon open mats and then end up going to Fargo without really training super hard. So mm-hmm. technically. Do they still do even, I know obviously not this year, but do they still do that big Solon open mats? Yeah. This is the first year they don't, they're, they're not there. Yeah. Cause that was the big thing with D Giovanni. Like he would bring like you, everybody could just come in and bang. Right. Yeah. Was, uh, oh, my best memory. I, so I got to compete in Israel in 2013 for, um, the Maccabi games. I thought that was probably the coolest experience I've had so far. Okay. So that's Jewish athletes from all over, from all countries. Yeah. They come in and um, they set you guys up in a bracket, right? Mm-hmm. Who did you, who was like the best guy on that team with you? Uh, so Nate Angle was on the team. Um, Jordan Lip was on the team. He was a national qualifier. We had Ophir Bernstein, who was a, an all American at, at uh, uh, Brown and a, and a junior world silver medalist for Israel. Hold on, did Ophir have an Iranian in his in his bracket? No, I, there were no Iranians. So it was weird. All the no, every, no, at the world, oh, Cha- okay, not at Maccabea games, yeah, yeah, he, he world won. championship. Okay, so I confused it. Sorry, yes, there are no Iranians at the Maccabea games. I apologize. <laughs> every, I should have prefaced maybe there's no Iranians. They're probably the only co- – well, there's a bunch of other countries there that won't send people to the Maccabee games. But um, I'm guessing Egypt – Egypt doesn't send anybody to the Maccabee games, do they? I'm not sure. So wrestling, wrestling, there was only like three teams, three or four countries that were represented there. Like track and field, okay. Oh, they had everything, yeah. Yeah, that's track and field. You got probably, what, 70, 80, what, how many countries? A, a lot. I'm not sure. Like 70, got- 80, right? Yeah. Because Canada is going to have a team. Brazil is going to have a team. All of the Western Hemisphere is probably going to have a team, right? Yeah, it was awesome. Argentina, right? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, so Ophir, Ophir beat the Iranian in the semifinals, I think. No, okay, that's world. Yeah. So hold oh, on. yeah. We don't want to confuse it here. No, no, no. I'm at the Worlds, yeah. Did you know that they have – did you know that, that, that uh, Iran has a week? A week, not a day. They have a week of national Holocaust denial. Did you know that? I did not. That's a real thing, and I'm not making it up. A week of denial. A week of denial. That's a thing. And not to mention all their media, who runs all their media? Most of their media is state run anyway. Yeah. I mean, if their people care even like a little bit and to, to dig a, a, a level deeper, they're going to obviously figure out very quickly that they're being lied to, right? Well, dep- I don't know. What's their censorship look like? It, what's weird is they have like 40 million people who blog. They have like a really high, like that blogging is a big thing in Iran. And not all the social media platforms are, are what they are in like Southeast Asia. And like you're saying, what's the censorship level and what, what are they on? There's all these other different social media platforms besides the big five, you know, like uh, that we have here with these Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, which those are tied together, those two. And then you got YouTube uh, and then uh, Jesus Pizza TikTok, right? There's all these other ones that are, that are catching fire, but they don't have all the, it's not, those are pretty universal, but like some of them are pretty heightened, like what China does with, with Facebook and Google and, yeah, right? right. Cause it's globally not like the youth, cause in America you can do what you want, right? Like if you want to just, if I wanted to crash and burn on Twitter, I could do that. Right. If I just wanted to like start insulting people and then everybody's, what's this guy doing? And then they, they kicked me off. I get reported, but I ran is, is weird. It's real weird because like there, there is a high level of censorship, much like China. And then obviously the, the highest level would be North Korea. Yes. Because that guy doesn't let anything in. Like he is literally out of his mind. But they, yeah, that's a thing. I actually want to Google it and show it to you because yeah. it, it blows my mind that much. But um, what's Israel like? It was awesome. Yeah. So cool. Well, be, just being, first off, being in a place with all this history, like, you know, our tour guide. So we, we would train in the morning and then we like toured the whole afternoon and just like seeing all the history of everything that happened was super awesome. And it was, it was a really awesome experience. I want to go back. How do your mom and dad, um, uh, mom and dad, both Jewish. Yep. So do they have, um, do do you have family over there? No. I mean, I think I might have a distant, distant relative, but I do not. All my family's here. Yeah, I'm seeing, like, a bunch of stuff, like, on BBC. And, you know, you got to vet this, right? Yeah, the Holocaust denial is a, yeah, it's a big part of what they do. Oh, my God. So crazy. I'm going to do some research. Dude, check it out. You got to, you got to, uh, yeah, they're Khomeini, uh, Ali Khomeini. He issues videos on it. It's so nuts, dude. That blows my mind. Yeah, they, they, yes, it's a real thing, dude. So wild. That blows my mind. Um, do you think, like, whenever, do you know when you meet a Jewish athlete? Do you know, like, do you know when someone's, I, mean, I don't even know. Well, a lot of times I can tell by their name. I mean, it, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of Jewish last names that are typically Jewish, but. Like Gross and Harris are not Jewish last names. Not, not to, no. Uh, Why well, I, I laugh because we were in Florida. And we, we had this tournament. It was right where the, the D1s had a, their dual meets in, in Miami, and we had our, our tournament, a D3 tournament. And, and all I know is, like, I'm about to wrestle, and I look at my dad, and, and he met all of the Jewish parents of all the other wrestling. I don't know how he found them, but, yeah, we, we find each other. You, you find each other? Yeah, he's like, he's like, oh, this is, you know, this is this guy's parent from NYU, and they've got all these Jewish kids. And I was like, awesome. The Bernsteins. Yeah. Um. What's the guys from Colorado? The twins. Oh, the Fine Silvers. Fine Silvers. They go, they, they've done Maccabee, haven't they? Yeah, they did it in 2017. Those guys are good guys. Those guys are junkyard dogs. They're tougher and freaking two oh, yeah. dogs. Um, yeah, those guys are really good guys. I like those guys. Um, they're from Colorado. Uh, what's his name? The head coach for Indiana. Goldman? Oh, it used to be Goldman. Goldman. Yeah. Goldman's Jewish. Yeah. 
Okay. I heard he's go I heard that it's Goldman of Goldman Sachs. Did, did That's you hear that? too. Is that true? I think so. That is wild. And there he's from Colorado Springs, I believe. Okay. And then like Angle. Angle's not a Jewish name. Gross is not a Jewish name. Harris is not a Jewish name. What was gross before it was gross? Because what happens a lot of times when you guys, your uh, uh, whoever, grandparents, great grandparents, whoever immigrate, they change their name so they wouldn't be discriminated against, right? That's kind of the, the playbook with that. It used to be Gordetsky. Gordetsky? Yeah, which I think is so much cooler. Were you, um, where, where are they from? Poland? I think so. Poland? Okay. Yeah, because people come here and they don't want to be, uh, discriminated against via their name which obviously we know that's a part of our history right um it's just like um i'm starting to get into like uh when the irish built the air uh, railroads and the chinese built the railroads and how they would discriminate against them and how a lot of them would change their names the irish could blend in sometimes um and then um the chinese obviously had no chance of blending in right yeah um, remember, I, I invited you to Passover a couple years ago. Did you? I, well, I met you at the at the airport, and I I was like, yeah, come on out to Passover. I don't know what Passover is about. I understand it's like when they passed over all the houses, right? Yeah, it's when the it's when the Jews fled out of Egypt. And then, what did they do? They whenever they passed over all the homes with with the firstborn boy, what was it? Yeah, it was the, the last door? plague. The last plague was the death of the firstborn, but the Jews put. Uh, blood i believe it was lamb lamb's blood on their door so that they passed over it passed over their houses right yep and that's the thing oh you invited me to that that you did it was in the airport yeah i love it I can't i'll send you an invitation next year if it's in how is that how is what well, tell me about that oh it's a lot of fun we, we read there's you know a book we read well so i'm not super we're my family's conservative so we're not we're not like extreme religious but yeah we uh we have a lot of you know, we get our family together we read from the the book and we we get to kind of all have good food. The book is called the Torah, I believe. No, no, no. The book on Passover is the Haggadah. Okay. Yeah, the, the Torah though. Bible. Yeah. Your Bible is the, the Torah. Torah. Yeah. And then your prophet is Abraham. Uh yeah. Uh, yes. We don't believe him. No, prophet. I'm telling you, your prophet's Abraham. I'm not asking. Him. Okay. Okay, hold on. Who's the prophet for Christianity? Jesus. Who's the prophet for uh, Judaism? I don't think we believe in prophets. Okay, who's the messenger? Oh, like, yeah, Abraham. Abraham. Thank you. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, so yeah. You, but you would call, okay, so who's the prophet for, uh, for Islam? Who's the messenger of God? Hold on, hold on. Who's the messenger of God for Islam? It's not Muhammad. Muhammad is God. Or Muhammad. Correct. Uh, Correct. So, so, so hold on. Let's not call him prophet. Let's just call him messenger of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who did they transmit? their uh where was a lot of their text transmitted from and who was it who was the conduit from god yeah. to the people yeah i think it was a lot of abraham it's abraham right that's no i'm saying that's who it is right. yeah yeah it's abraham but maybe you don't call him a prophet but he was the conduit from god to the people yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. The seller guy right yeah yeah um so that's the community seems pretty special are all those guys so weiss he's jewish yeah uh lips they're jewish yep harris yeah uh, what is the guy who wrestled for Kent State at 197? Black Michael Blackwell? Blackwell? He's not Jewish. Blackwell's not. Don't laugh. You yeah. can be African American and Jewish. Okay, true. <laughs> no, yeah, you know so. yeah, yeah. Um, and then, uh, geez, oh, Pete, who else? We've had uh, David Sternberg was state champ. He's Jewish. Um, is everybody but Blackwell Jewish, basically? A lot of them, yeah. Is there anybody who's not? Uh, Michael Lintz. Oh, hey, I don't know. If, I think Michael Linsker is Italian. Um, which I guess doesn't, it's not a religion, but, I uh, yeah, I think there's, there's, Lear, I know Lear's dad was Jewish. Yeah. Matt Lear. Lou Lear is Jewish guy. Mark Matt Haywald was our, uh, first state champ. He was not Jewish. The, the dad. Yeah. The guy who was a D3 national champ and D1 All-American. Yep. They're, Haywalds are not Jewish. No. Wow. And he's a Beachwood guy. Yep. So besides Haywald, is every state champ been Jewish? I think it might be. That's crazy. And how many of you guys had? I think 17 or 18. And 
<laughs> that's pretty good numbers. One of the Peters is was uh, no Ryan Peters and Scott Peters both were runner ups. Scott is the podiatrist. Yes, my podiatrist. Yeah, and that, is that who did your leg? No, <laughs> no, we had to go through Cleveland Clinic and he's out of a scope. Was that out of a scope because it was the leg and not the? Uh, well, I I called him on it. He's like, yeah, you don't need surgery, and then the school's like, you need surgery. So. Oh wow, so. Okay, so what is the level? You say the level. You're not super devout. Then you have people who are orthodox. Mm -hmm. Orthodox people don't drive on Saturday. They don't use power on Saturday, right? Correct. So yeah, I'm. I'm there. So there's reform, which are like the it's the lowest level. Um, then they have conservative, which is where my family is, and then you have the orthodox. Okay. So. One of the Peters brothers is orthodox, I believe. Scott, Scott is. Yeah. Scott is orthodox. So he, like, I think, like, he's the one who, like, has to, like, stay directly next to the state tournament and all the tournaments he goes to so because he has to walk on a Saturday. Yeah. Well, he, I don't think he's been to the state tournament in years because, he, yeah, he can't go. That's crazy. Wow. I mean, that, that's people's religion, right? I, it, I just, like, it's just always uh, fascinated me how tight-knit the Jewish community is, man. I'm hoping to become John Carroll's first Jewish national champion. Would that would you be the would you, would you be their first All American who's Jewish? In wrestling, I think so. In wrestling, um, yeah, cool. did you ever pop over into Skokie when you were over in Skokie? Yeah, because Skokie's like Beechwood, but oh. on a massive scale. Yeah, it's a much larger Beechwood in the Chicagoland area, right? Yep. Um, so, uh, something I need you to look up is um, in the seventies. Mm -hmm. the neo-nazis um had a they wanted to have a parade they wanted to have a a, a, a public event in skokie illinois wow. so check out skokie versus the national socialists i will that's the nazis if you didn't know so check that out that that's a that's a landmark first Am amendment case um people don't know but you're allowed to have um They've, they've curtailed, like, quote-unquote hate groups, which is what the na National Socialists would be, Nazis. Mm -hmm. um, they've curtailed hate speech and what the – because it's kind of arbitrary what is and what isn't hate. Well, it's not arbitrary. It's pretty mm -hmm. obvious what's hate speech and what's not, which is not. Um, and what they did was um, they went to um, – it was an all-Jewish uh, city council. They denied the uh, National Socialists the right to have their rally. And at that point in time, like some crazy number, like one out of every two uh, residents of Skokie had survived the Holocaust. Oh, wow. So obviously, you know why the Nazis yeah. are want to, they want to make everybody mad, right? But they want to, and it's like America and you're allowed to do what you want, right? And it's a freedom thing. We get it. Um, but yeah, go read up on that. Skokie versus the National Socialists. In the 70s. Maybe early, it's 70s, I think. But it's a landmark uh, First Amendment uh, freedom of uh, assembly. It's a freedom of assembly, freedom of speech case. It's it's fascinating though. Um, yeah. Go check that out. Holocaust denial, Iran, the socialist Pope versus National Socialist Party. Those two, those two things. I gave you homework, Sammy. All right, I'll write you an essay on it, Mister. What, what's Skokie like as far as the Jewish community compared to? Because Beechwood is real small. Mm -hmm. So I, I didn't really explore. I mean, I've been, I didn't, I mean, I don't think I did actually go to somebody's uh, Jewish, Jewish holidays in Skokie. I think it was Skokie. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how close it is. Um, I know like my sister went to Jewish overnight camp in Wisconsin and there's tons of Skokie people there. So I, I'm not sure how, how close knit it is though. What is the percentage of uh, Jewish people in Beachwood? Is it about 80, 80, 90 percent? 80 percent? I don't, I don't know what it is now because I, I think it's, I think it's decreasing in, in percentage. So like when I was 13, I think I went to like 70 bar mitzvahs. Like it was like one a weekend for like a year and a half where my, my younger sister, who's four years, five years younger than me, she went to like maybe 40. So I, I think the, I think we're becoming a more diverse community as far as religion, which I, you know, I think is awesome. Yeah. How many synagogues are in Beachwood? Oh gosh. Uh, I don't know. 10 is there 10 of them 
Uh, well, there's a lot of orthodox ones, like right around John Carroll. I don't, I don't know. That might be University Heights. But John Carroll's a Christian university, isn't it? Yep. And then St. Ignatius is a... Is I'm a Jesuit. I'm a Jesuit. <laughs> is that what they call it? Uh, that's what I like call it. Like the name you made up? I made it up, yeah. That's kind of funny. Um, the title of the video is going to be? What's that? Is that the title, Jesuit Sammy Gross? I don't think I'm going to, that's probably not what I'm going to put in there. It's not, I don't think I'm going to do that. Um, uh, no, the Jewish culture is like amazing, dude. It's, it is, it is, it's, it's fascinating. And then the fact that you got to go and compete, how did you do? How'd you do with the Maccabea games? So I got gold uh, and freestyle. And then they, they forced us to go Greco. And I went, I think, 0-1 or 0-2. I can't remember. Did uh, Angle win? Yeah, he won both gold. Because Engel was a U.S. national team member in Greco, I believe. Oh, he was sweet. Nate Engel. He just got the job at Oregon State. Yeah, he got the job in in Imar. My nephew's out. They're in. Oh, was that where Ian was coaching? Yeah, he was there for four years. He was the uh, second assistant. Oh, wow. So he won. You know how that goes. That's just how they, that's how they do the staff, right? The staff goes. They take the staff. You know what I mean? Like, they, they usually associate – some guys will stay behind, like Lee Pritz stayed at Arizona State. Um, you'll occasionally, like, have one guy who kind of, like, knows how the institution works that they'll, they'll keep. But mm-hmm. not the case in Oregon State. I think Chris Pendleton just wanted to hit reset, which is how it goes, right? That's, it's a business, right? D1's a business. Oh, yeah. Um, when you look at um, – does everybody own a business? It's like everybody – a lot of small business owners in the Jewish community, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't want to make generalizations, but uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of successful business businessmen. Yeah. Well, hold on. Your dad owns. Yeah. Your dad, Harris. Lip. Oh, I guess you're naming all the wrestlers. Dad. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, all the wrestlers they own small business. That's not a. Ge- I, I wasn't making yeah. a blanket generalization. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah, there. a lot of the wrestling dads. Come on, Sammy, stick with me here, buddy. I got you. Most of those parents, though, they own small businesses, right? I think so. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Yeah, what does lips? What do the lips do? They're uh, it's called Merit Brass. I can't remember what they do. What is it? I don't know. Whereas, like, what what's his name? Um, Harris does the metals. He does yeah. scrap metals. Yeah, Harris metals. And then you guys are finance. What do um, what practice does uh Peters go? What is he in? What practice is he in? He's in. Uh, podiatry he's got his own practice at so. okay so he owns his own practice there, you get what i'm saying yeah you guys don't it's like it's a part of um you don't really have to rely on other people right do you think is that is that like one of the tenets of like what how they raise you guys uh, i don't know i don't know if it's that we don't rely i think we just really value education and kind of the the hard work ethic there's no question about the work ethic man it is like i don't think anyone's gonna work outwork Sammy Gross, you know what I mean? Um, when your parents, when you're in these like despairing times, right? You're just like broken ankle, not a full time student, and you didn't flunk out of Northwestern. That's the other thing. No, I came home voluntarily. Yeah, you, you your Northwestern deal was. I asked you yesterday, what was your GPA when you left Northwestern? I think a three point five. Yeah, so that's like voluntarily you leave, mm-hmm. right? Like when you get in these situations, it's just like, I think how you were raised, a lot of it has a lot to do with it. Like you're saying you value education, you value hard work. It's like, I don't know if your community values it over other communities, but it, it seems to, if you look at the success, success rates that it kind of definitely suggests that. Right. Yeah. Uh, and it, yeah, the whole, the Beachwood thing blows my mind because, and that's the other thing. Like when you go to that, the Maccabea games, did you watch any of the other things, any of the other events, I guess? Yeah. Well, so we were there for like three and a half weeks. So you were there for three and a half weeks. Yeah, it was awesome. It was so we so for the first like week, we would we'd practice at six AM, we'd go back, we'd take a bus and we would tour for the rest of the day. And then starting after we had these opening ceremonies, which was just like it, it, you know, every athlete there was there, like the um, the, I think the prime minister of Israel was there. Like it was Obama gave us a, a little shout out on the screen. Like it was really cool. And then we competed. So there's like two weeks of competition and we competed like the second day. 
So we could made it the second and third day. And then we had the rest of the time to go watch other sports and to explore the country on our own. They let you explore the country on your own. Uh, I mean, like I didn't go like in, in restricted areas, but like, I, yeah, I headed out to Tel Aviv and we went and checked out wow. some cool stuff. Wow. And there's obviously very restricted areas when you get into contested areas. Um, and it, it's border, the border security is like, all oh, yeah. parts. it's not like, like, I don't think people understand border security here. Border security there is like, oh yeah. Next level. Right. Um, what was the coolest thing you saw over there? I think we went to, we went to the Western wall, which I thought was just like the coolest thing ever. It was just like, cause you know, so much history involved there and like that just it's one of the holiest places I've ever been and you know everybody puts a little prayer in the wall and people are praying and it was like a very emotional experience there that's like sacred to everybody the major religions I brought up earlier Christianity Islam and Judaism that's a, it's like sacred religious area for all of them oh yeah yeah right yeah. I mean like you're saying that that that's the spot that's like the religious spot on the planet that's like that brings everybody together. Yeah. Does everybody have access to that? Oh gosh. I don't know. I'm not sure. I think so. I'm not, I, I could be wrong. My Hebrew school teachers are, are real angry right now, but I'm guessing they're not watching. So you're okay. You're okay. Well, yeah, the, the, the Jewish community, man, it just like, it's fascinating. The Skokie thing is going to blow your mind, by the way. I know. I, I'm going to check Skokie it out. It's going to blow your mind. Um, but yeah, uh, where do we go from here, Sammy? Where do we go from here in, in the summer and your training and how much more creative training can you do before you got to get back on the mat? Uh, I'm hoping I can get back on the mat soon. I'm going to hit up your, hit up your nephew, I guess. Yeah. I go over there and work out with those guys. I will. They roll like hillbilly style. They're kind of hillbillies though. Just, just disclosure, just disclaimer. That's okay. How far, how far is Oak Harbor from Beachwood? Uh, two hours, maybe. I'd roll over, dude. But um, when do you go to Ohio Pile? And um, obviously, it's going to have to wait because it's holiday weekend. But what, when do you try and start up? And the, the no contacts being lifted May 26th, by the way, for for, for the, uh, the OHSA. And as you know, the loophole, as we talked earlier, the loophole in Ohio is freestyle and Greco. Mm -hmm. It's not folk style, and therefore, they're allowed to do it, right? It's always been the loophole with the contact with coaches and all that, right? Yeah. You know that, right? So, Solon might be open. I don't know, man. People are pretty sketched out right now. I, I'm guessing school facilities won't be open. John Carroll's not open, so we, we can't get in there. But you got – you know, everybody else is on the mat. Other guys are on the mat. I'm watching these Roman Bravo Young things where Roman Bravo Young's on the roof of a of a freaking – parking garage in tucson arizona drilling have you seen these things no you haven't seen them no i gotta get on twitter more go to his twitter or go to his instagram and watch these videos of him training i will it's they're amazing the music's amazing the editing's editing's amazing he's a freak that's amazing oh yeah 133 is gonna be nuts next year dude i know yeah. i know who you got i know who you got um so Hey, Stevan's parents are there. They're from Serbia, right? His dad is. His dad, I, I think, was born. I'm not sure if he was born in Serbia and then moved here, or he was born here and his parents are Serbian. Okay. And then Dave Habit, he finally just. Do you know Dave was competing for Slovenia and he'd never been there for a while? Really? Yeah. I asked him. I was like, Dave, do you speak any Serbian or uh, do you speak any Slovenian? No. Do you know do you know Dave at all? I do. Dave's cool. Dave's like real cool, kind of spaced out a little bit. Real cool guy though. Awesome guy. I love Dave Habit because he's one of our Burnett trained guys. I remember he would show up late, and, but he would wrestle real hard, and I was like, this dude's a goofball. Yeah, he was. He he's was cool. different. He's just different. But Stevan has like a real legit family tie. He's their first. Is he their first Olympian? Yeah. That's awesome. And wrestling. Recently. Yeah. And then Amin is San Marino's, which is like a micro nation in Italy. Yes. He's their first Olympian. That whole thing, is, that's amazing. Uh, are you guys close? Are you, you and Stevan close? Yeah, we talk still. I mean, I, I'm obviously not as close as we were, but 
yeah, I, I talked to him. Are you going to go to the Olympics and watch him close? No. No, okay. I mean, I'd love to go to the Olympics, but I probably won't. Hey, can you go to the Maccabee Games now? Not, yeah. Not, not in the current climate we're in, I understand that. Can you, when are you, when does your eligibility run out or is there no age groups? What is it? There's no age groups. So, so I think Nate Angle just wrestled there in 2017 for the last time. And, and he, I think he'd been there three or four times. Okay. I and thought about it. It was supposed to be in 2021, the year after the Olympics, but they're moving. Two now, right? Yeah. Please, go do it. That'd be sweet. I'm thinking about it. Your reason to stay in shape. I know that one dude does it from Virginia. Is that Prebish. Okay. I think Rob Prebish does it. Does he? You know him? I don't. No, yeah, he. I think Rob Prebish does Maccabee games. Check him out too. Fine Silvers do it. Yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Some training. Well, him. One of the Fine Silvers is wrestling for Israel. Really? Uh, Mitch. Mitch is. He's trying to make the Olympics. Well, Mitch took third last year, right? Yes. Forty nine. Yeah, yeah. Dude, he's really tough. And then who's coming back? For John Carroll? No, no. Oh, who's two. coming back? Which two twins are coming back? There's two twins that graduated. Uh, Which two are coming back? I don't know. There's so many. There's like I think they have like an entire team at the national tournament. Oh, well, they have four. They're half a team. Yeah. I, they I did it know. twice. They did it in Pittsburgh and Cleveland. Um. Yeah, I can't remember which do you, one. Do you know those guys at all? Not really. I reached out to Mitch on, on Instagram a couple weeks ago, but I, I don't I don't really know them personally. Is okay, so there's a situation with how the Jewish community is. Is that something where you could go and train with them and they could train with you or what or is it is it like like that? I mean well, I, I feel like most people would train though. I don't it doesn't matter if it's Jew, right? If I reached out to somebody else at Duke and said, Hey, can I come train? They probably would say yeah. Yeah. But I, I feel like that tie probably adds a little bit of That's what I'm saying. Is it an extra? I get where wrestlers are. I get that we're a little yeah. twisted and we're we'll 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 take anybody, right? Yeah. But is it an extra stop? Probably like, okay, he's a Jewish guy, he's done the Maccabee games, right? Yeah. I think so well, yeah. I mean my dad always tells me when he goes to the NCAA tournament, he roots for, you know, John Carroll and then Jewish guys. <laughs> You're funny, dude. <laughs> it's how it is, though, right? Yeah. It's it's just how it is. Um. Well, hey, man. When's the when's the vacation start? Uh, I'm probably gonna head out there in like an hour. Well, dude, well, let's get you off here. You know, you got any stories for me? You got anything else for me? Got any questions for me? Uh, I don't think so. Thank you for doing this. Yeah, man. No, it was great to see you yesterday. That was the coolest thing. I was like, dude, it was like awesome. And the fact that you were, like, the What's up? you were like, hey, dad, overweight dad, come over here. I mean, whatever. Yeah, I get it. But um, you were cool about it. Who are you with? I was with my mom's friend and her children. I was going on a hike with them. Okay. And where were they? Are they Beachwood people or somewhere else? Uh, Pepper Pike. Pepper Pike. So what is it? Pepper Pike is orange too, right? That's orange district. Yeah. Adam Kruinski's their coach now. Is he? Yeah. He was U.S. US University School, right? Yeah, he coached me in my freshman year of high school. Is he John Carroll guy? Yes. He's, was he All-American, John Carroll? No, he, he had injuries, so he never got – I think he was ranked like third in the country, but he, he didn't get to – What's he do for a living? He's, he's an English teacher in Orange. Oh, is he? Yeah. That's a good place to teach. You know, like between Orange and Solon, those are the two best schools in Ohio. Yeah. And then I think they threw this other one in there. It's stupid. Uh, it's not. It's not a stupid school. It's a great school. But um, they compare Ottawa Hills, which is like a Beechwood type community, mm. in the middle of Toledo, Ohio. Really? It's like a. It's not gated. It's this really weird community. It's a square. Whatever you're. What are you guys? Four square miles. What is Beechwood? Something like that. Yeah. Something like it's literally just like Beechwood, but it's in the middle of Toledo, and it's like. 70 kids to a graduating class. Okay. How are you going to compare that to, to Solon? Solon's big. Or, oh, that's my point. Like, yeah, you don't – they're not in the same you, – you classify them by division, let's say, right? Like, yeah. you don't have Ottawa Hills compete in Division One and stuff, do you? No. So, you can't compare the school that's 70 graduating kids to a class to the school that's 450 or 500. It's just – it's not fair. It's – it's a dumb comparison. 
because they can do more. They can do more because they can have their spending, how they can money they can put per pupil. I mean, oh, okay, yeah, it's... you get my point, right? Like, yeah, yeah. That's apples and oranges. That's a grape and a watermelon, right? Yeah. It's just not comparable. But, dude, I love you educating me on the Jewish community. Thank you. Thank you for educating me on all the, the hate crimes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's horrible, but. I'm a, I'm a, I love learning, so. I'm is, the, the Iranian thing's crazy, right? Oh, God. Uh, to, to, um, yeah, that, like, bums me out, actually. Like, makes me super sad. And then when they, when they forfeit to us. Yeah. When, they, when I say us, when they forfeit to Israel, you know, like, when they forfeit to, that's just. Well, I think Dom Abinator had to as well for. The Abinator thing is, like, really crazy and complex. The Abinator thing is, like, bonkers, dude. The Abinator thing is, like, yeah, Andy Rovat kind of filled me in on the Abinator thing. And it's, like, I don't even want to, like, go there. It's, like, that bad. I'll go there on off camera with you, but it's, like, dude, yeah, crazy. And Dominic Abinator, obviously, he's an East Sider. He's from Highland Heights, right? Yeah. Good dude. So I'm, I'm sure you grew up looking, at, you know, looking up to him at some level, right? Mm -hmm. What's he? Yeah. Probably two or three years older than you, right? I think he's a year older than me. That's crazy. A year older than you. Yeah. It's awesome. Hey, let me cut the video and let's talk off camera. All right. All right? Yeah, uh, thank you so much. Hey man, enjoy this weekend. What are you going to do this weekend? Hike? Probably hike and hang out. You're going to raft and go over those falls? No. I, so here, I'll tell you the quick story. I'll tell you, I'll tell you long last on camera story. My best friend, um, he is a people that move the Pacific Northwest lose their minds. Did you know that? It makes sense. Dude, they're, it's nuts. They're crazy. I got friends out there who are crazy. My nephew lives out there. He's not as crazy. He's, he tried to kill me two years ago though. Um, hiking down into this gorge to this beautiful waterfall ian yeah i was like dude you gotta calm down i can't i'm not used to this um so my best friend i was going to cover this thing in hawaii for flow wrestling when minnesota dueled there yeah the, it wasn't a duel it was a pool tournament it was real weird it was minnesota it was uh american yeah. it was uh oregon state and it was oklahoma and in between so it was Reno TOC, the Hawaii thing. And then I had like seven days, six days, whatever it was. So I went to Portland. My best friend lives in Portland. He, he's from Genoa, which is across the street from where I live in Oak Harbor. And um, he moved there in 2003 and he's, he's into rafting. And um, he's like, hey, we're going to go, whatever the hip term is, we're going to go float tomorrow or catch some gnar i don't know gnarly right yeah, whatever okay we're gonna go do it tomorrow we're gonna go get in the nar nar is what they actually say and i'm like oh, okay let's go do it anyhow he's like uh he's like let's go and then and then um we're going and it's like north of portland about an hour and a half battleground well, maybe it's 45 minutes i don't know i don't remember but i remember like we're going up there and I, I had a rental and he had his truck and the raft was in the back of his truck we had to inflate it we had to go and do like work to get in the river and it's, it's Christmas Eve. It's December 24th. Okay. He didn't have any kids yet. And he's pumping the boat up and he's pounding beers and he's like, takes me to the waterfalls and a dude, it's like, it would be like going over the falls in Chagrin Falls. Oh gosh. Yeah. And he's like t pumping the thing up and he's walking me through it and it's snowing. And I'm like, and he's like, oh, we're going to stick this. We're going to nail it. Blah, blah, blah. And he's drinking more beer. And he's pounding more, more beer. And I'm like, oh, we're going to stick it. And then this and that. And he's walking through. If things get squirrely, get left, you know, paddle right. I don't know. He's like talking all this. Dude, it would be like me taking him into a college wrestling room and letting you guys just kick the tar out of him. Oh. That's like he must think like I slept on a a uh, 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 a bunch of whitewater rafting books the night before and through osmosis I'm now an expert on whitewater rafting. I'm not. So we get there and then he's like ah you know he's super confident and as we're scouting it out telling me and and I'm like all right well as we like are 
we shoot the boat down the bank of the river and hey, get in and get wet a little bit. You know, we got wetsuits on. He's, he's like, hey, man, if it gets, if, if we do swim, you know, get left into this cave right away or you're, you're going to die. Well, then we like get in and he's like, hey, man, we might swim today. So make sure you get to that cave. And we, we go down the river a half mile. We hit like a class three rapid. And then it goes, boom, right into this water, 20-foot waterfall. And he's like, as we're getting closer to it, and in a minute, he's like, hey, we're probably going to swim today, so make sure you get to that cave. So, like, the confidence level was we're going to stick this, we're going to nail it, to, hey, we're going to swim today, get in that cave. So we obviously hit it. I'm going to shoot you the video. We hit it. And we just, we flip over and I hung on to the boat and the boat and the recirculating current of the waterfall caught me and pulled me in like a conveyor belt. To the cave? It, no, no, no. Into the waterfalls and it was pounding me into the bedrock of the river. Oh my God. When you watch this video, you're going to have anxiety. Who was videoing? That's, <laughs> I set a video camera up on a tripod and pressed play. <laughs> That's what my dad, my dad's like, why didn't the person videoing you help you? And I'm like, there's <laughs> nobody videoing. Uh, so, dude, I drank a gallon of water. I had to, like, they had to watch me all night. I was, like, wheezing. Oh, my gosh. Terrible. But um, we got over. Dude, I, I flew the next day to Hawaii and did that thing. Okay. The whole, pile. The whole thing was wild. Don't get into the Ohio pile. No, I'm not that. But I'm going to send you this video and you can be like, yeah, you're an idiot. I'm excited to watch. Yeah. Don't, you can, if you hate me, you'd be real excited to watch because it's like I can watch this idiot almost die. <laughs> I mean, how many people get to capture their near-death experience? Hey, yeah. Oh, my, and my, is that your mom? Yes, yeah, my mom. All right, tell her I said hello. Okay, so I'm picking him at 11, at 12.50. Okay. All right. I'm going to plan it. Okay, I'll get so, him. Sorry, I was on an interview. I'll get him. For two hours? Yeah. Sorry, I gotta take care of the dogs. All right. Hi. Hi. Okay. That's coming Good. to Passover next year. Cool. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see how my uh, my comfort level of Passover is. <laughs> it's a fun one. Stay healthy. All right. Uh, Thank you very much for the interview. Man, there you go. I'll shoot you that video, dude. Thank yeah. you for the education today. Thanks. Thanks for the time. Uh, get after it. And if you want to meet up and hike someday when everybody's the paranoia and the people are not scared to death anymore. I wanted to shake your hand yesterday, but it, I don't want anybody to get wigged out. He's right here. I got him. Sorry, my sister's got a puppy who's here. Hey, Franklin. All right, show me Franklin real quick. Franklin, come here, buddy. Are you on your phone? No, I'm on my computer. There's Franklin. Sorry, sorry to interrupt your interview. Hi, Franklin. What is that man, Franklin? Franklin. What is Franklin? He's a Bichon Havanese. Yeah. All right. All right, thank you. Ohio, Ohio Pile, I'm going to cut this. I'll talk to you real quick off camera, all right? All right, sounds good. All right. Oh, you're good. Oh,